with everything else that's going on, I mean, who cares? I think the stock is undervalued, frankly. I don't see how you can really justify it being under a $2 trillion valuation with everything we see happening in the autonomous driving space, the frequency that it's uh, that it's rolling out. I mean, they're now starting to test without a safety monitor in the car. By probably around Christmas, they're going to start letting passengers in the car. And I think they're going to expand pretty rapidly from there. I mean, this is, you know, we were told for years, Tesla's never going to achieve autonomy. Ford and GM and others are going to catch up in EVs and autonomy. And Pure Vision is never going to work. This is like the market equivalent of finding out that Bigfoot is real. It turns out you can actually drive a car with computer vision. And everything that we've talked about, really the entire consumption model of, of transportation shifting from buying cars to consuming transportation as a service, all of that's unlocked now. And you know, you see Waymo, they're also raising money. This is no coincidence. This isn't coincidental timing. They're looking at these videos on X and they're going, oh shit, Tesla just unlocked and supervised. We're going to need to push hard to be able to compete with what they're going to be able to do. Um, so I think it's a big moment. I don't think um, most people have really truly gotten it that you can actually go buy a, a driverless car that can do all of your driving for you. You can start to use the phone now. You can certainly, um, in Austin, you're going to be able to call a car with nobody in it. And I think in 2026, they're going to start rolling that out to customers as well, especially customers who are already in a robo-taxi service area. If I have the exact same Model Y that's in the robo-taxi service and I live in the geofence, why shouldn't I be able to watch a movie while my car drives me around? just like I can in the robo-taxi. Why shouldn't I be able to open my Tesla app and tell the car to go pick my kid up from school and then come back home? Um, I think that's the functionality that's going to come in 2026. And just look at the reactions from people. I mean, even the mainstream media, they have to bite their tongue. It hurts them to say something good about Tesla, but they can't help themselves when they try FSD 14. They're blown away. People are waking up to the fact that this product is here and it's real. Um, I don't even think I don't think we've scratched the surface of really the market and the public becoming aware of what's really been achieved here. I think we're just getting started. Yeah, lots of great news that happened just even since last Thursday. Elon confirmed that SpaceX is going to go IPO kind of puts this whole space-based AI data centers uh, a little bit closer to potential reality. Then you had uh, this weekend Grok holiday release. I got mine th this morning in one of my cars. And so now I'm going to test that. But now you can use Grok to actually, you know, set navigation. And your video, Omar, was just so beautiful. It was so awesome. You talking to Grok and telling it to take you to multiple places. And then halfway while you're using self-driving, you say, Grok, I forgot I need to go to the drugstore. And then they'll just automatically set that up for you. And then you can ask questions. Is this, you know, safe to take this medication or not? And then tell me more about the location I'm headed towards. That was a really good um, demonstration of what it could do and why it's so powerful. And then, of course, on Sunday, uh, they two cars were spotted driving around that uh, without anybody inside in Austin and Elon confirmed it's just testing now with no one inside like so you're you're saying that you might maybe in a couple of weeks they might already start taking real passengers by then and then um just i mean obviously the big news was ford ford saying they cannot sell electric vehicles they are doing a 19.5 billion dollar drawdown uh, they're stopping their EVs, uh, electric vehicles, for the, at least for the Ford Lightning, Ford F-150. F and they're going to go to these ERVs, extended range EVs with a gas generator, um, basically hybrids. 
And then Elon replied to that, <laughs> saying, it's like, uh, I told you guys, I told them, you know, but they insist, like, Legacy Auto insists on dying, he said, right? It's like, he goes, uh, it's like, it's like, it's like riding a horse while using a flip phone. And so it's like, you know, it's not that Legacy Auto doesn't know that they need to go EV and they don't know that they need to go uh, um, autonomous. They just can't physically do it. And they tried, they lose money. So it's like, damn, if you do, damn, if you don't kind of thing for them. Um, and Omar, I saw that you had this great, you know, walk down memory lane, like all these articles that was pumped about Ford and how they're going to kill Elon or Tesla. <laughs> and then it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot we can learn from sort of the EV bubble there where we were told, well, hey, now Legacy Auto is getting into EVs. They're going to wipe the floor with Tesla. As a matter of fact, by 2025, they're going to have a higher market share than Tesla. And I mean, we've still got a couple weeks left in 2025. Maybe they could surprise <laughs> us. Yeah. But it looks like they're kind of headed in the other direction. Tesla's US sales are still 10 times greater in the EV seg uh, segment than theirs are. Yeah. And they're pulling back. So even though to sort of a casual observer, you might look at an F-150 Lightning and say, hey, this is a product that I like. Maybe I want to buy it. Maybe I even like it better than the Cybertruck, at least in terms of aesthetics. But fundamentally, when you have a business like Ford's quote-unquote Model E business with an EBIT margin that's negative 103, you know, it's just going to be difficult to continue losing money producing those vehicles forever. And they looked at the changing regulatory environment. You know, the EV tax credit is gone. The corporate average fuel economy standards have been react, uh, relaxed. The general attitude of the administration. And they said, look, if EVs aren't fashionable, if we're not getting support, we don't want to produce them. So I think they'll probably ultimately be better off not uh, burning billions on this business. Hopefully they can come back to the drawing board and find something that's actually more cost effective and profitable for them. But Tesla held up well against competition. Legacy Auto could not do what Tesla did in 2018, 2019 with the Model 3 and actually make money selling electric vehicles. They really failed to do so. Um, and they're going to focus more on hybrids. But now we're hearing a lot of these same arguments about autonomy that while well, the legacy automakers, they're all going to figure out autonomy and they're going to buy it from somebody or figure it out. And Tesla won't have anything special. But you're telling me that the people who couldn't even figure out electric vehicles are going to figure out autonomy? At some point, I think autonomy will be ubiquitous, as will electrification. But these technology shifts are hard to manage. There's a massive, massive disruption here happening with autonomy uh, that's shaking up the business. And a lot of these legacy automakers might not survive. I, I think electrification is going to be really important for autonomous vehicles. When you look at the Tesla website and it says, hey, we project $4,000 of fuel savings if you travel 12,000 miles a year. If an autonomous vehicle is traveling 120,000 miles a year, that's $50,000 in savings over five years instead mm -hmm. of $5,000, for example. Um, yeah, I think all autonomous cars are going to be electric and Ford is going to regret winding down some of these investments. That's a great stat. I was trying to ask that question whether or not hybrids could actually, technically, they could actually be autonomous. There's nothing stopping them from doing that, but, you know, it doesn't work. Alexandra? Actually, in California, they have a law that all autonomous vehicles have to be fully electric. Why? Oh, interesting. Huh. But yeah, from a technical perspective, you could use a hybrid, way more originally used Chrysler Pacifica hybrids for their fleet. I guess not work. Is my mic working again? Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I was actually wondering that not all Waymos are electric, right? They're, some of them are on a. On Currently, a all Waymos are electric. Oh, they are. Okay. Because they're, I was just. Their fleets you know, uh, Jaguar I paces. Okay. If the if the OEMs want 
to license anything. Is there anybody out there working on a FSD like solution that would work on a non electric car? Theoretically, FSD or any other system should work regardless of powertrain. It should, but why does it not? Well, it, it does. Omar, it, Omar explained it. it. It's really a business model. I asked Grok the same question, and they said technically it can be done, but it's it's like Omar w w actually put the numbers in place. It's like, yes, you can do it, but it, it'll cost a uh, dollar per mile is going to be much higher. So they're barricading themselves actually on both levels, not having EVs and not having cars that can yeah. implement any FSD in a profitable robo taxi exploitable way. So I guess they just see it as a driver assist function and not as a monetary or money producing function. Could that be it? So right. the self-driving model itself, all it outputs is what angle do you turn the wheel at? And how much should I be accelerating or braking? There's a separate sort of vehicle specific control system that can take that desired acceleration and translate it to, you know, pedal outputs. But yeah, it could work on gas, it could work on hybrid, it could work on electric. And honestly, I think that Tesla probably should license it to vehicles regardless of powertrain. I mean, this technology is so powerful. The fact that you could slap a few cameras on a car, put a little bit of compute, you know, maybe a thousand dollar computer or with AI5, maybe around four thousand dollars and make it almost impossible to crash. You wouldn't want to limit that to just electric vehicles. I think the market will naturally tend to prefer electric powertrains for these vehicles just because it gives you the lowest TCO. Um, so I had some answer to Alexandra. So Calm AI is um, making a um, smartphone related um, system, the vision only, that could be added to any car. Um, uh, George Hot says they're a few years behind um, Tesla. They know that they'll be ahead, but you know that, that's an option. The issue with putting um, an FSD system, Tesla FSD system, is that they need to have the hardware for chip, which um, draws at least 250 watts um, all the time, pretty much. So, and then it can easily go up to a kilowatt. So if you don't have at least a deep hybrid in order to um, run the electrics or something like that, you know, you know or do something, um, I, I, get, I get some kind of like a significant hybrid in order to power your system that you could not put it in. Um, the other problem was that um, you have to have over the year update. Um, that's one of the reasons that um, Tesla said that they couldn't do it is that all these company, car companies come to them and say, I have no over the update, I want to do it. It's like, well, you don't have the, the basics for me to start doing something for you. Um, they probably also need to install the um, FSD, uh, the Tesla operating system as well. I want to make a one point was that um, the uh, collapse of um, Ford F-150 Lightning is actually very similar to what's happening with Waymo. Because even though everyone talks about the number of Waymo, so they got 100 million miles this year, they got 2,500 vehicles, they are still losing on the order of two to four billion dollars per year. The um, Google other bets in which they're you know, incorporate under lost $4.4 billion in 2024, and they continue to lose on the order of $1.2 billion every quarter, the majority of which is Waymo. Um, Waymo makes about um, maybe $200 million per year in revenue, but they're losing, you know, this up to $2 billion. Next year, they have these big promises they're going to get to four times as many uh, miles go from um, uh, what the two, two point five million miles per? Or no, it's closing on ten million miles per per month because of they're doing the hundred million miles. So they want to go to you know four times that that level, um, which means more vehicles. Um, but then buying those vehicles, you know, say two thousand, four thousand vehicles at a quarter million to a quarter billion dollars, means that they're they're still at negative one hundred percent margin. 
right? I buy the vehicle, I lose the money. Um, and then if I start getting pressured on the, um, on the per mile charges, then I never make money. So less about the, the issue of LiDAR technology supply chain, but it's also that their business model is broken and that once they're under pressure on the margin that they'll fail. And also Uber is not that much stronger. Uber makes $50 billion on a hundred million, a hundred billion miles. Um, but they, and it's a mix of uh, delivery and passengers, um, they're losing money again th this year. They had some profitable quarters before, but then they lost it. I think it's somewhat similar to um, Amazon back in the early days. They can cut back if they were going into survival mode of like, I need to make some money when I get pressured. Um, so they could go down price some, but they basically need to make at least a buck, maybe a buck 50 plus the driver charges in order to, to come through. So once there's a broad option below 250 per mile, they their business model is dead. So, so that's a problem that both Uber and, and Waymo have. And it goes to how long can a Google or whoever's backing them say, I want to burn money. I want to burn money to be in this game. Um, so they can do it for a while. Um, especially Google. Google's making a ton of money. They can say, I will burn money forever. But their, their business model, supply chain, it's, it's all fundamentally broken. The same for Uber as well. Well, you know, they've actually been raising external capital. So Bloomberg and I think maybe the Wall Street Journal or one other source was reporting today. Um, their last round was $45 billion. They're talking about a a valuation north of 100 billion now and bloomberg's reporting that they're looking to raise as much as 15 billion dollars so similar to ford yes the economics were broken but they were willing to produce it for a few years just to look like they're not falling behind in electrification right now if waymo raises 15 billion dollars and you know google other bets they're losing about 5 billion dollars in their other bets Probably most of that is Waymo. Sure, let's call it 2.5. You know, they could expand significantly and um, run at a loss for, you know, two, three more years uh, with that type of capital. And they're also leaning a lot on external partners to manage the fleet, offloading a lot of the OPEX onto these sort of external companies. So... I agree. It's tough to see the path to profitability. I mean, you know, their business is looking nice. They're seeing growth. They've probably got revenue at this point, you know, between a hundred million to two hundred million dollars, and they're probably losing, you know, about two point five billion dollars on net. But um, you know, they are right now seen as the leading autonomous service. I don't think they're going to have any trouble. Uh, raising their round, and hopefully, you know, future generations of vehicles are more cost effective than the I paces they're using right now. But um, yeah, it, it's hard to see the path to profitability in the next few years, even with everything that is going right in the business for them. And if Tesla ends up becoming a significant challenge, and they actually have economics that work structurally. They can actually put a robo taxi on the road for a profit. Then it might be a little harder for them to raise capital and continue um, operating at a loss. 